Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. Thank you for being here. I am grateful to be here, and I am glad to be here. You know, um, last week we talked about neurogenesis. Have you ever, like, uh, bought a new car? Like, say you bought a red car, and you thought you were the only one on the road, then all of a sudden you can see every single one? Well, since last week talking about neurogenesis, I now see all these little red cars, or I see a lot of articles and writings about neurogenesis, but more importantly, I'm seeing that connection between neurogenesis and empower, the empowered wealth mindset and leadership. You recall we talked last time that there's a billion neurons in our brain, there's a trillion synapses in our brain, and the connections that can be made between the two are greater than all of the molecules in the known universe. Well, in thinking about that, a question we should all ask ourselves is, how do we increase these number of neurons? And it's called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis, we used to think, or scientists used to think, neuroscientists, that it was commonly just that it was there when our brain was developing and then it stopped. Now they've proven that neurogenesis can occur all the way till the time we leave the planet. So imagine, if you will, if we have the secret on how to unlock that neurogenesis and be able to continually increase it. We'll increase our intelligence, we'll increase our joy, positivity, and our leadership. It aligns perfectly with the Empowered Wealth Mindset. There's a newsletter that I subscribe to written by Eric Barker, and it's called Barking Up the Wrong Tree. And so one of the little red cars that I saw this week was in his articles, which he talked about how neuroscience now is reveal revealing some of the secrets on how to generate more neurons, if you will. It doesn't say it in those words. It just talks about neurology and how to strengthen the neurogenesis in the, in the brain. So there's four things. Well, just kind of four things that I'm going to share with you. Number one was gratitude. Now, not just gratitude, but ask yourself the question, what am I grateful for? Now, as you know, I ask myself that question in my Empowered With journal every morning, and I ask myself every night before I go to bed, and I would struggle sometimes to really come up with something new, or I felt like I had to come up with something ingenious. But the reality is, and the studies show, that all you have to do is ask yourself, what am I grateful for? And that in and of itself releases dopamine into your system. Do you know what Wellbutrin is? That's what people get addicted to. They subscribe to it so that they can get a boost of dopamine. Can gratitude do the same thing? Absolutely. Do you know what? What is it called? Um, Prozac is? Prozac is the same thing, only it's to boost serotonin. And gratitude will do that for you. Now, you don't have to answer, just ask the question, what am I grateful for today? Second thing, label your negative emotions. When you say, I feel awful, give it a name. I feel anger. I feel frustration. Don't say, I am angry. Talk about what you feel, and if you can give it a name, just one or two words, it'll suppress that emotion, and you'll start feeling happier immediately. Third thing is decide. Make your decisions. You know, decide means to kill off the alternatives. And so when we make a decision, our brain goes, I mean, have you, like, think about it. Finally, you make a decision, and your brain goes, whew, finally, okay? But... Making decision changes your perception. It changes your perception of the world, really. Finding solutions, solving certain problems, actually calms the limbic system. When you try to be perfect, that overwhelms the brain. You know, there's two reasons why we don't decide. One is procrastination. The second one is perfection. So if we, we try to be perfect in our answers, but when we give the, when we do make the decision, it reduces the stress. Have you ever been in the car, you want to go to dinner, and you turn to your significant other and say, where should we go tonight? I don't know, you decide. I don't know, you decide. That's actually having a negative effect on your brain. Make decisions is a positive effect and moves you forward. There was a study done recently with rats. They took two rats, rat A, rat B. They injected them both with cocaine, which is a great release of, which would provide them with a release of dopamine. But with rat A, what they did differently was it had to go over and push a lever. It had to decide to go push a lever down in order to get its reward, whereas B didn't do anything, just sat there. Well, when they measured the amount of dopamine that got boosted through their system, rat A was significantly larger than rat B. What does that tell you? First, it tells you that if you go to the gym because you have to go, or you're made to go, or you just should go, you're not going to get the boost of dopamine as when you decide to go. 
I think there's a whole bunch of other ramifications that maybe we'll cover at another time, but I'll leave you with that thought. Fourth thing, hugs, hugs, hugs. Our body needs hugs. Our brain needs hugs. We need to feel love and acceptance from people. When we don't, it's painful. Now, I don't mean pain, disappointing or frustrating. I mean actually physically painful. Studies have been done with patients, with individuals, people, that they've been subjected to rejection and then immediately surveyed their brain. And the brain reacts the same way as if it was receiving physical pain. You might as well break your arm. And so if we can get hugs, they've now proven that that hugs, that touch, four to five hugs a day is worth a, a booster shot of dopamine um, coming into you. And, it, and, uh, and so they've, um, you know, and, and one other thing that they found out is that texting has zero response. Zero response. So what's the dead simple way to start this upward spiral? What I call, um, you know, what I, what I call uh, helixication. Uh, there's a neuroscience researcher by the name of Alex Korb, and he explains it this way, and, and I love the way that he explains it. So we're going to spiral up now. How do we spiral up? Everything is interconnected. Gratitude improves sleep. Sleep reduces pain. Reduced pain improves your mood. And then your improved mood re reduces anxiety, which improves focus and planning. Focus and planning then helps you with decision making. Decision making further reduces anxiety and improves enjoyment. Enjoyment gives you more to be grateful for, which keeps the loop of the upward spiral going. And you know, enjoyment also makes it more likely um, that you'll enjoy it, that you'll do exercise, that you'll be social, which in tune makes you even turn, makes you even more happier. So what are the four things again? Let's just review them very brief, re review them very briefly. One, ask. Just ask, what am I grateful for? Two, when you're feeling awful, label that emotion. Three, decide. Don't procrastinate. Don't be perfect. Perfect. Just decide in and of itself. It doesn't, you know, we'll move things along. And then fourth, hugs, hugs, hugs. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Meaningful Monday. I hope it's helpful to you. We'll talk about more of these things in the future. Remember, live life deliberately. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.